Hello and welcome to one, two, and three point cylinders. Uh, with a cylinder, uh, you start with a rectangular prism or cube. Uh, what's important is that um, one of the faces is square because a square equals a circle. If you create constructed an ellipse within one of these things, you get a giant oval in perspective and not a circle in perspective. So you want to try to make these faces on either side as square as you can make them. This, is, this seems a little long, this seems a little tall, maybe this is a little long, but basically get as close as you can to a square on one of uh, opposing faces as you can get. Um, the next thing to do is to find the uh, center of the faces and notice how light I have constructed the rectangles. Uh, the rectangles are there basically just to orientate your cylinder in space and give you reference for these points of tangency which I'll talk about and which are really important. Um, so uh, make sure you do them light and then once you do that in your square faces um, and where it's best to start is, the, is in the most revealed plane, the, which is underneath, ironically, under, on, on, on this side of the horizon line, um, usually. This would be the largest one. This is the largest. And this is the largest in terms of how much of the plane you're seeing. I should have started with this one. I should have started with this one. I want you to do it like this. Start with the, the larger plane of the two. Um, and then you cross corners and like this and that is the uh, how you find the perspective center which is right there uh, then once you find the perspective center if it's two point you go through the perspective center to the vanishing point and you get these all important points there and there the points of tangency there and there and then you do it this way as well through the vanishing points and you get the points of tangency there and there same thing I did up there, going through to the vanishing points. Uh, when you're doing one point perspective, uh, this one goes through to the vanishing point. That's the points of tangency. And then this is an implicit horizontal. So you just do a horizontal through it, through the center point, and then you get those. Um, just like that, just like that. Now with these, all of these are going to a vanishing point one of the three vanishing points in order to get these. I've got one left here to construct right there. That and that. Okay, so basically once you get them, the one, two, and three point cubes are done all the same. Once you get to this phase, and I'm just going to do this one to show you uh, the, the concept that I use. Um, so what I want you to think of is uh, that there is an airplane uh, taking off on a runway. Let's say this is a little airplane here. And it's taking off on a runway and it's going this way and as soon as it hits here on the runway it's going to start to take off. Now it's not going to hang out on the runway or it's not going to rocket off to this next destination. It's going to go here and take off in that direction but then start arcing this way. Okay. The same thing happens with this side, where there's an airplane taking off here, right like this, going on down the runway, and then boom, it takes off in that direction, but arcing. What you're trying to do is reconcile these two airplanes taking off so that they can have like a, a mid-air collision, not to use a graphically... Um, you know, absurd image, but anyway, that's the idea. These two arcs are reconciling themselves, okay? Now, I'm doing that a little darker than you need to. You can work really light with this, and that's what you want to do. It's the same thing here. The airplane takes off, the point of tangency takes off, room, and then it reconciles. And then you can spin the thing, which I think is the best way to do it, and just repeat that. This goes like this. This takes off, doesn't hang on the line, it, it takes off, but it doesn't just rocket towards that thing as well. Takes off, takes off. Then you've got to equal, you got to split the differences between the two 
so that it looks like there's a continuity. Now that's what you're trying to get. So once you've done that, you want to look at it and critique it and say, well, does this look like a perfectly symmetrical ellipse, which is they're supposed, what they're supposed to do. And it looks like a little flat here and a little stubby there. Um, so I think what I need to do here is kind of make that a little fuller that way. And here I think I need to pull this, like that's a kind of a quick takeoff right there. So if I pull that out a little bit more, and maybe pull that one out a little bit more, I get more in the ballpark of it being a symmetrical ellipse. And it's something, you know, that you just have to find. So for now, we'll call that OK. Not pristine, but it's, uh, you know, good enough for now. Now again, I'm trying to keep these fairly light. So what I do at this point, once I'm satisfied with what this is, is I take the verticals up from the farthest point on that ellipse. So I'm going to take it from here and here and try to keep my vertical, not try to move it too much, but take it vertical as I can and go up to where it intersects there. And this is going to be about, that's the farthest point right there. Take it up, where's my vertical? About right there. That's what these clear rulers are so good at. So now, up here, I have one, two, three, four, five, six. With these more oblique things, we tend not to take the ellipse far enough into the corners. That what these points help us do. They encourage us to take it Now that's probably going to have to go like that more. Now the more oblique ones can be tricky. The tricky thing is to not to make it so they don't look faceted, which is a way of saying that they um, that, that that you're looking like flat angles. You want to get it so that it really moves through the whole thing, and that might mean splitting the difference there. When you start getting dark. Okay, so here you see I'm kind of running into trouble here where this is like not quite working out that way. So what you have to do is maybe I could change my vertical slightly so that moves more over to it. So that was very slight. But that gets me more in the ballpark. And then once you get to here, you really want to emphasize the object lines, which are the lines that would be visible if it was a solid object. So there to there to there. And then you can lighten if they're dark. These aren't bad but the ones behind slightly, not a lot. I like to see the construction, so that would be that. The same thing with this. Start with this one down here, extract the verticals up. Uh, you can do some horizontal ones if you want. Um, and again, these uh, when you connect this ellipse, so I'm going to just do this really quickly in the three-point perspective, it's going to go to it's going to basically, this needs to align with the vanishing point here. And the same with this side here, like that. Okay, have fun.